If you arbitrarily make these people the tribulation saints, the only way that you can do it is to assume that your position is right. And you can't assume that your position is right. You have to prove your position. Proof and assumption are two different things. Circular reasoning is very dangerous. I remember once I was appearing on a radio program in New York, and in this radio program, I had a group of hostile people who were jumping up and down on me with the proverbial golf shoes. And I had to give some consistent answers on the subject. And the man who was needling me was a former Mormon who had become an atheist professor at Barnard College in New York, next to Columbia University. So he couldn't wait to get his fangs into me, the helpless fundamentalist. And he reached over and passed me a slip of paper. And the paper said, you are guilty of circular reasoning. Your argument is fallacious. It is illogical. God can't be illogical. And we were talking about the Bible. So I said to him, what do you mean I'm illogical and I'm wrong about the Bible? I said, the Bible is the word of God. He said, that's your wrong point, friend. He said, you are quoting the Bible to prove the Bible. And if you quote the Bible to prove the Bible, you are guilty of illogical thinking and you are arguing in a circle. And he smiled broadly and sat back and lit his pipe. As he did, I prayed. I had an answer, but I wanted one that the audience would get immediately. And the Lord gave it to me instantly in the form of a question. Who told him the Bible was one book? And I said, absolutely right. Never thought of that. And I looked across at him and I said, who told you the Bible was one book? He said, what? I said, who says the Bible is one book? He says, it is. I said, no. You are uninformed and ignorant about the Bible. I said, the Bible is a compilation of 66 books spanning a period of almost 4,000 years written by different people in different times, all of whom claiming an experience with the living God. And if I quote one of them to back up the other one, they are not in the same time frame, and therefore I am not guilty of circular reasoning. But you see, this atheist had put his finger on one of the problems we have to face. Namely, God is not illogical. He's consistent. He thinks straight. And if you've got to assume a position to prove the position, that's illogical. And the position's not going to stand. Now, I have no quarrel with the people who hold the position. If they want to continue holding it, the Lord bless them. I would just like them to say the same thing to me. The Lord bless you, and you keep your position. And then stop fighting and discriminating in the body of Christ. The position I gave tonight is a very strong position. It's a very sound position in English, Greek, or Hebrew. It is sustained by all the great minds of the church for 19 centuries. And it's not heretical. It's plain common sense. You cannot invent stages of the first resurrection to get yourself out of your problems. You cannot make differentiations between Greek words in order to get your views across. You have got to go to the text itself and ask the question first, what did Jesus teach? What did Paul understand Jesus to teach? What did John understand him to teach? What did the church fathers understand them to say? What did the reformers and the Catholic theologians interpret it to mean? And after you get all of that evidence together, then you make a decision based upon the facts and not upon emotion. People who hold to the pre-tribulation position are pretty much psyched out by fear. 
that if Antichrist comes, they're going to be persecuted and they don't like it. Well, welcome to the club. Neither do I. So, if we are honestly to consider the second coming of Christ, let's consider it systematically. Jesus said, after the tribulation. Paul interpreted that way. He said, don't be troubled by the people who are telling you that the day of the Lord is come or gone because it's not going to take place until the man of sin is revealed. That ought to give us pause for prayer. John says the Antichrist will come. And the church historically interpreted exactly the way I have given it to you tonight. Now you're sitting there some of you with very deep convictions opposing my own. I once believed in the pre-tribulation rapture. So did Dr. Oswald Smith, one of Canada's greatest Bible teachers. And after 50 years in the ministry reading his Greek New Testament, Dr. Smith saw after the tribulation and connected it with the Apostle Paul and reversed his position after 50 years and wrote a beautiful pamphlet Tribulation or rapture? Which? They said he was senile. No. He was just willing to change a position he found would not stand up. If you want to hold a position, God bless you. If your pastor teaches you that position and he believes it, then what you should do if you have doubts is to take the scriptures to the pastor and put to the test what you have heard. If what I have said is not the truth, then I stand open to anybody's correction based upon the Word of God. But don't stuff it under the rug and bury it in your mind and conscience because you're afraid to face the Antichrist. That's an ignoble motive for holding on to a position. If you want to hang on to a position, hang on to it because it's scriptural, whether you like it or not. That's the reason for hanging on to a position. So you hang on to what position God leads you to. But I beg you, for Christ's sake, do not make this an issue of division in the body of Christ. Do not discriminate against your brothers and sisters who do not hold your position. Do not look down upon people because they honestly disagree with you.